beautiful people, how are you this morning? Uh, my name is Carolyn Benny, I am an Australian Stamping Up demonstrator and I'm coming from my craft room here in the beautiful Adelaide Hills and I'm running a little late this morning, I haven't been feeling 100% today so anything could happen today, I'll just put that out there, but um, I thought after doing a little bit of a poll on my Facebook page the other day asking the question have you made some Christmas cards yet and I got lots of responses ranging from I've made 150 Christmas cards to I've made zero Christmas cards so I thought let's make a Christmas card today and get a little bit into that Christmas card spirit hopefully spur some of you on that haven't yet made some Christmas cards. Hey April, how are you? Good evening to you or good morning. It's morning here. We're, we're ahead of you. I'm assuming um, you're in the States. So um, I hope you're having a lovely time wherever you are. As you come on in, make sure you say hello. I know it's a little bit later than I normally go live. So I'm hoping that I'm still going to see most of you beautiful people today. Let's have a little bit of a Excellent there. Try and fix that up. Make sure as you come in you share my video so other people know I'm live as well and they can come in and watch. So let me share with you what I'm going to be doing today. I'm actually going to be doing some watercolouring and just a little bit of colouring with my mark, my uh, watercolour, my stamp and write watercolour markers. So it's a little bit different because often I do use my stamp and blends, which are alcohol markers, but I thought it might be fun to just go back to the watercolouring, which is also a love of mine as well. So this is the card. If you haven't seen it on my Facebook page, this is the card we're going to be making today. And it's it might be a, a little tiny bit ambitious, you know, sometimes sometimes I can be a little bit ambitious for my Facebook lives. Let me hold it up there, do you see? But I think it is, um, I think it's one that we could do en masse because I'm really mindful that with Christmas cards you want to make a lot of them, right? So you want to be able, whatever Christmas cards you choose to make, you want to be able to do them en masse, make lots and lots of them. So I think you could definitely do this one on mass. What I would probably do is cut up all of my watercolour paper, do my stamping, and then do my watercolouring in one big go. Like just watercolour all of those cards all at the same time. Hey Amanda, hey Kelly, how are you? Um, so that's probably... Hey Jen, how are you from Canada? You guys have snow. We don't even have snow and I'm making a snowman, so... Yeah, well, you know, it's still fun to make Christmas cards, snowmen in Christmas. Even in Australia, where we don't have any snow whatsoever at Christmas. Um, what was I thinking? I've lost my train of thought. This is what's going to happen today. I also want to do a quick shout out to um, a beautiful, for a beautiful card that I got given at, on stage last week. I got given lots of actually beautiful things. Um... I'll show you. First, we'll show you. This is from the beautiful Amanda who gave me this. Um, and I have had a little sneak peek inside. Thank you very much, Amanda. That was just so beautiful. I couldn't wait to show my husband and all my kids. They love that. Um, I didn't give them the chocolates, though. That's, that's for me. Um, and some beautiful swaps some 3D things I got at, on stage cards and, and so on. Thank you everybody. Um, but I wanted to share this one I got from a very special young man called Lachlan and um, he's in Western Australia and his mum and him watch my Facebook Live. Now I'm not sure if they'll be watching today because I'm on a bit later but um, anyways he wanted to make me a card and so he looked through um, my YouTube tutorials and he picked the card that he liked and this is the card that he made me so it's a it's a 
a replica of a card that I made. Isn't it good? Like, he's, he's so amazing. And then he did, like, he made, it's just too adorable. Um, so, thank you, Lachlan. I cherish this card. And it will go up in my stamping room. So isn't that gorgeous? So anyways, I just had to share that because um, there is lots of beautiful, talented people out there, isn't there? And Lachlan is one of them. Thank you. Okay, let's get into some stamping. So I'm going to flip you guys over. Hey, Kayla, how are you? I've got coffee. I'm chocked up with Panadol. Today. <laughs> And let's get stamping. All right, so let me flip over the... Oh, I tried to be organised today, but look, it's all probably going to go pear shaped. Hey, Linda, how are you? Hey, Tony. Hello, hello. Come on in. Come on in. The water is fine. All right, I'm going to flip you guys over. There we are. It is a beautiful, sunny spring day here in... Balhanna, it is so lovely. I'm off to see my niece. She had a baby yesterday. It's her third, and I'm so excited to go and visit with her this afternoon. Um, so that will be wonderful. You love the card, Fran? How are you? Just pop card, because I know... Otherwise, it's hard to hear me. So this is the card that we're going to be making. Oh, thanks, Fran. Yes, my beautiful niece. Her name is um, Summer, and I just love that name. I had three boys, so it's always really fun to see little girls. Because I, I didn't get to have little girl babies. I had to have little babies. Well, I didn't have to. I love my little boy babies. Okay, so let me see. I'm just making sure that I'm in the right spot and I can chat to you beautiful folk as now that the video is flipped around. Holy moly, you do wonder sometimes. Facebook catches you at crazy times. Okay, so I can see you all in your comments now. So hopefully all is going well. So this is our card. I really I really was loving this card. Let me share with you where everything came from. So the first thing that we're going to be using is the stamp set called Seasonal Chums. Now Seasonal Chums has been around for a little while. Um, hey Shannon, how are you? I was just talking about Lachlan's card. So you have to rewind if you didn't see that bit for Lachlan. Um, Seasonal Chums is a really beautiful stamps it's been around for a few years i can't get over it i can't get past it it's so cute it's actually done like this you can see the um the stamps are done in a way that you can make them into tags and then you can stamp one stamp fold it over and cut it out with um, dies and they're beautiful tags but I often use this stamp set just on its own because the images are so adorable and sweet and the outline images which I love so that is in the um am I back to front no no I'm the right way this is in the annual catalogue you can find it it's on page 103 seasonal chums um and it does have the coordinating framelit still available, so make sure you go check that out. The other one that I'm using today is these beautiful framelit um, word dies, which come in the Christmas, the occasions catalogue, which is that one. Um, and... It's a beautiful stamp set. So you get the stamp set and you can also get the dies. And I'm just using the dies. I was going to use the stamp set as well. But I'm just using the dies today, the Christmas one. Although there's Merry and what's it called? Holidays, Happy and Christmas. Merry, Holidays, Happy and Christmas in the large dies. And then these little tag ones as well. So yeah, definitely. That's a great Christmas bundle to get. If you just want one bundle this year, that might be the way to go because it's a really great bundle so check that 
out. If you're looking to purchase your Stamping Up uh, goodies here in Australia, um, please consider me. I have a blog called carolynbenny.com and you can head over there and my shop is attached to my blog. So you can shop 24-7 from my blog and um, purchase all of your Stamping Up goodies. Now let's have a look at this card together. So we're going to be doing a little bit of watercolouring. Then we've got the die cut and a few other bits and bobs. So let's get cracking and make this card together. So the first thing I like to do when I watercolour is I usually get out my chopping board. I bought this chopping board from Kmart. Um, and, you know, it's it's you don't have to get an expensive board. I'm sure you you might even have just something laying around in the shed that you could use but and then I get my watercolor paper now I use stamping up watercolor paper um, because I find a really good high quality paper um, I've tried other papers I'm not as in love with them for stamping it's not just because I sell it although that's a good reason um, but I actually really really like this paper it isn't the cheapest paper that we have but it's totally worth it for these beautiful watercolor stamping images so it makes all the difference you will not get this quality of watercolor look if you're just using regular whisper white paper it just won't work so I'm just getting some what I'm doing now is I've got my painter's tape, you know, my good old trusty painter's tape. I'm ripping off some pieces and then I'm actually just popping it on my clothes. You can pop it on your jeans or whatever you're wearing and taking some of the stick off of it in running it over and like just getting rid of some of that stick. Because even though it's painter's tape, you could use washi tape, same kind of deal, even though they're not as sticky as you know your sellotape that kind of thing you still want to take as much stick off of it as possible then I've got my foam mat which um, Stampin Up is a Stampin Up foam mat it's used for paper piercing so when you get your little piercer out um, but I also like to use it when I'm stamping with watercolour well with stays on ink when I'm going to do watercolour because here's the thing with stays on ink. Stays on ink is perfect for watercolouring because it does not run. Hey Linda, how are you this morning? Hey Carol, how are you from Nashville, Tennessee? Um, it's fantastic for watercolouring. It's in fact essential for watercolouring. But the problem that it is, it dries crazy quick um, and it's it doesn't release from the stamp as easily as black ink like memento ink or our watercolor inks so not only do you have to be quite quick when you're stamping with it you have to give the stamp the best chance of releasing the ink to the paper as you can and I find having the foam behind it really does help a little bit with that so here's how I go about the stamping of our snowman because you've got to remember he's actually he's a front and a back right so I pop, I get a little bit of post-it note and I pop over the image that I don't want to ink up. I have to really think about having everything ready to stamp as soon as I've got that ink on it. So here I've got my watercolour paper, it's on my foam mat. I know that I want to put my, um, my die cut at the top portion of my card so I've already kind of laid it out and I know where I want my image to go where I'll still have room to put my die cut so I've thought that through and I also know that I want the front snowman the snowman in the middle to be at the front and then these two fellas to be kind of a little bit behind I want them all cuddled in and snug together you can have them separate but I want these dudes to be a little cuddled in and snug okay so I've got everything set up and ready to go because you have to be fast moving with your stays on. Here's a little trick with my stays on. I think I've had this one forever actually. I should probably pull out the other one. But you can re-ink them and I do liberally with my stays on. But I also have got stuck in the 
there comes like a little plastic that comes with your stays on. Don't throw that out because it actually seals the ink in even better. So I've popped a little couple of dimensionals underneath that plastic and so it stays in the lid and every time I want to use the stays on, it's right there ready to go. Now I've got my post-it note. I am being crazy generous with how much ink I'm putting on the stays on taking the post-it note off, flipping it over, popping it down and I'm holding it down for a good couple of seconds. I'm giving every opportunity for that ink to release onto the watercolour paper. Now yes, you can use your uh, Stamparatus for this, which is such a good reason to um, use a Stamparatus. This particular time, because I wanted to do the masking technique and my mind was a little bit addled, I didn't use the, stay, um, the Stamparatus. Sorry, as I said, brain a little bit addled. Um, but, you know, you could definitely do that too, and that would be a good idea. So now I'm putting my mask on. Now, we've talked about masks a little bit before, but I probably should have shown you how to do this again, but... I'm just using a piece of sticky note, which has actually got, you know, post-it note sticky note. It's got a little bit of stick on the back of it. I stamped on it and then I cut it out. And now I can pop that over the top of my image and have it ready for the next part of my stamping. I'm popping my post-it note back on top of my stamp again and going crazy with my ink all over all over all over taking off my post-it note and bringing this baby down like so and this will actually give the image um, it'll look like it's behind so squish 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 hope it's releasing there we go and can you see he looks like he's behind. Now one more go on our little snowman. I could definitely have done this with the reindeer as well. Just decided to go with the snowman. I think I've used the reindeer a lot actually. So it was snowman's turn. And as I said, we don't really have, we have snow in winter here in Australia, which is in the middle of our year, but um, we don't have snow in summer, of course, anywhere. It's just too warm here, but it's still fun to have a snowman, right? Oh, you, yeah, the lid to keep it in the, the plastic to keep it in the lid. Yeah, use a couple of dimensionals on the inside and it's perfect. Okay, so there is a little snowman. Now you can see this one's eye oh, didn't turn out great, but I can fix it up in a little bit. So do you like that look? Do you like how the snowman... Um, as kind of, you know, we use that masking technique to make him look like he's coming. He's kind of got his two buddies behind him. Yeah. Hey, Lynn, how are you? From New Jersey. It's a snowy day there today. Oh, wow. That's kind of fun, isn't it? It's beautiful and sunny here. <laughs> All right. I'd like to see snow today. That would be fun. Okay, so I'm just going to pop on my masking tape. I'm not going to get super worried. Sometimes if I want a border, I will be very precise how I put my masking on. Today, really what I'm wanting is to make sure that I just hold down the paper. So when I apply, because I'm putting like kind of a wash on the back, I just want the wash to not buckle the paper too much. Okay, so that's really... The main reason why I'm using the tape today. Fran says that she woke up to ice on the roads. Yes, it's very different, very different climate. Okay, I've got my, this has to be one of my favourite blues at the moment, blueberry bushel. It's one of our in colours. If you do not have blueberry bushel, I suggest you, after this video, you go straight to my blog and you purchase it immediately right because it is such a beautiful color and the thing I probably like about this color the most is that when you apply it for watercoloring 
it actually seems to um i can't think of the word the color kind of un unravels a little bit and you can see the purple inside of it as well it's really beautiful to watercolor with now i like to um, with these new ink pads i've kind of decided i like to put the ink on a block like that to watercolor with it's just my personal preference i know some people are still using the inside of the lid but it's just it's just not the way that makes me happy so i'm using a block um, and i've just got my aqua painter i've applied a reasonable amount of water to the block okay um, i want it to be watery and juicy um, so that's kind of how i'm doing it these days now there's quite a lot of water quite a lot of bit mm, english it's not my it's not working for me today okay so now I want to start I'm not going to start right next to the snowman this is going to be a nighttime scene did I, did I mention that and um, so it's not I want it to be quite a dark uh, blue so here can you see how much water lots of water right so I'm squeezing the aqua painter and I'm just going in kind of a an interesting free shape all right, I want it to be bumpy, I want it to be interesting, and I'm coming down to where it's going to meet the ground. You see, I'm kind of building a little bit. Now I'm going to come in closer to the snowman, and this is where my talking and colouring may get a bit tricky while I'm concentrating. But um, I wonder if you can see. So I'm coming in, I'm just trying to be careful. I'm I don't want to messy up my lines but there's such a lot of water and the ink that I don't need to be keep on dipping back in it'll kind of just bring it it follows me as I go around so as soon as you wet watercolor paper it allows the ink to flow and the color to flow uh, but around move around a little so that's kind of what I'm doing now I'm just wetting the watercolor paper there's quite a lot of color on my brush already but really my main purpose is to wet it because then this color is going to flow and because I've put so much moisture on it hopefully it'll it'll flow in all the right places so bringing that around now because our snow men are white I really don't have to colour in their, those snowmen very much. But I do need to get the dark colour around them to make the white stand out. So that's kind of my purpose at the moment. And we're nearly there. If you do make a boo-boo, it's okay. Just have a tissue close by so you can kind of blot off. You will be able to get most of the colour off not all of it unfortunately but you can kind of blot off most now as you can see there's really there's different depths of color there's different kind of light and shade and I'm not really wanting the background to be perfect I want it to be interesting and have different kind of amounts of color look at that that's kind of cool now what I thought once I've got one um, one color lying oh, let me just think of what I'm trying to say once I've got one layer of water and color down you can then come back in add more water to the block and just kind of drop in some darker color and it will move around because there's a layer of water on top of that watercolor already it won't really bleed until into your images where there's no water and there's no been no ink laid down already so you're kind of safe I mean you wouldn't want to go nuts but just by dabbing in some extra color it really will darken up that image a little bit and you don't need to be super precise because it just sort of stays where the water already was so what do you think about that that's kind of cool isn't it so let me bring you right down to see what that looks like so it's kind of moody isn't it he looks moody and interesting yeah 
I think so. Now the thing is with um, with watercolor on watercolor paper, you will find that as it dries, it lightens up. Hey, Miss Adele, how are you? Um, it does lighten up. So when you know you put it down, you think, "Gosh, that's super dark." Don't panic because it actually does as it dries. It lightens. So always go a little bit darker than what you kind of imagined now you could get out your heat gun and you could blast that and it will dry the lines will dry a little harsh which is kind of fine I actually don't mind that look when I watercolor um, or you could put it aside and so if you are making lots of these what I would do is I'd line up a big bunch I just use my wooden table to be honest um, my old wooden table that I have in my craft room um, because I'll just line up 20 and then put these blue strips inside. I'll, I'll throw up a photo later on this afternoon of when I've done that before. And I just will stamp all these watermelon. Watermelon? Holy smokes. I have to have a drink of coffee. I stamp all these <laughs> snowmen. <laughs> Watermelons, gosh. Um, stamp all the snowmen and then put my blue tape in between and just do lots of washes. All right, so yes, that's how I do it. Hey, Lorraine, how are you? It was lovely to see you too on the weekend. All right, I'm going to pop this to one side and I'm going to bring out, here's one I prepared earlier. So as you can see, our um, little, I still can't get out of my head watermelon. Gosh, what a day. Um, our snowman, here's a snowman I prepared earlier. Now, the reason why I'm not using the other one to colour is because I didn't want you guys to have to sit through um, me um, air drying or, or using the heat gun to dry the other one. But also, you need to make sure that it's fully dry before you start applying any watercolour or any, um, yeah, any more painting and colouring in the snowman because you don't want it to bleed because as you could see anywhere that there's been watercolor applied the color is going to be drawn into so we just want to make sure that um, that you get all that coloring dry before you move forward so let me see what am I going to do next right so let's have a little bow peep so this is the time that you might bring in your marker I've got one of our beautiful markers that you could bring in and you could darken up any bits of the image that haven't colored properly as i said if you use your stamparatus then that's probably going to um, solve any of those problems happening when you use a positioning tool but um, sometimes just using a little marker can be just as good as well so i'm just going to quickly add some lines back in that didn't stamp perfect and now let's get cracking so I decided to use, well, the first trick I wanted to show you guys is when you've got a white image like this, you might go, okay, well, that's snowmen are white, so um, just leave it white, right? And you can definitely do that. But I think that it makes the images always pop if you can add a little bit of grey around uh, the white. So let me show you how I do that. I'll bring you guys in so you can have a good close look. So anywhere that it's a white, so if it's a beard, like on, I think we did Father, oh no, I haven't shown you that card. I must show you that card, um, Father Christmas. He's got a white beard, but I'll just add a little bit of grey around the outside because it actually makes it look whiter. Seems a bit weird, I know, but it's true. So add a little bit of, kind of looks a bit like a shadow, I suppose. See these little bunnies? They're hugging the little snowman. Super cute. So I'm not sure. So I might just do perhaps one. Should I just do one rather than you watching me do all of them? Let's see. I'll see how I go. I'll see if I can quickly do as many as possible. Just put a little bit under his scarf. Bring it around. See how that's really defining the white more does it make it look like it's popping to you on the screen it's hard sometimes to know what's going to show up on the video 
I'm not being particularly careful. You will be more careful when you do yours because you will not have people watching you on your Facebook Live. But I'm just trying to be as quick as possible. Now, if you find, this is with our stamp and write markers. These are not our blends. They're stamp and write markers that I use with my watercoloring. If you find that it's a little bit sharp, the, the line is a little sharp, you can take your, um, your blender pen, which is not, nothing to do with the alcohol blends, but this is a blender pen. And um, you can just go over, just rub gently. You'll be able to do this on watercolor paper, whereas on whisper white paper, it's not as gentle, like it's not as easy. You can kind of make the paper bowl a little bit. But just rub over the top, and it kind of softens up those lines a little. It doesn't look quite as quite as harsh. So just go around and soften up that grey a little, and our little snowmen start to really pop off the page and look cute again if I was doing a bunch of these I'd probably just do all of this bit in one time perhaps sit in front of Netflix and do all of them together all right the gray makes a difference great good I'll just pop a little bit of... so that's sort of how so Adele says the grey makes a difference. Do you guys think the grey makes a difference? I think so. Now I've got my, we could do, well, you could do different coloured hats. I'm just going to use my favourite, of course, crumb cake. And all I'm going to do is just, a, a, this is just plain old colouring. I don't need anything fancy on this. It's just colouring. You could do this in many different ways. You could get your aqua painter out. You could use your coloured pencils. Um, there's so many different ways you could do the colouring on this card. But I just went for simple because I want to be able to do a lot of these and for it to be really easy. So, like so. So that's just a little watercolour hats. If you thought that maybe that was a little boring, you could then perhaps go and add like a little bit of grey. You know I love my grey. So you could just add a little bit of grey to the hat there to make the kind of the shadow pop a little bit. Even up here, even though we don't normally put shadow on the top, because it's night time, I think we can get away with it, just to define the darkness on the hat a little bit. Then as far as the colour of the snow, oh, let's do his nose, because the carrot, we need to do carrot. Now, in these very small areas, I tend to use the, the two ends to the stamp and write markers. There's the ballpoint end, which is for journaling, um, writing, and there's kind of the paint end. I tend to, for tiny little areas like this, use the ballpoint end, which is meant to be for writing, but it just gets you in to those tiny little areas without um, making a mess. So there's our little noses. Now uh, the eyes on these, just go over them so they pop out a little bit more. The same with the buttons. Add a little bit of extra darkness to those buttons like so same with the bunny's eyes and nose bring out the sharpness in that I'm not going to there is kind of a little bunny there but I'm going to pretend that bunny's not there because he doesn't really show up very well and that little scarf bring in the edge of the scarf again like so. Okay, now colour wise, I found with colours, um, when people can get a bit crazy with colours on cards, this is my personal opinion. Over the, the time I've been stamping, you can have, um, you can fall into the trap of going, oh, I can, I can put a rainbow of colours on my cards. I think the way, the trick of making your cards look good 
and classy is to try and limit the amount of colours that you put <clears throat> on a card, unless it is a rainbow card and then, you know, go crazy, right? But if you want to um, make a card look classy, limit your colours. Try and keep it as few as possible and use them in tones, perhaps a little bit more. So even though I've got three snowmen, I could do each one in a different colour, but I decided just to try and stick to two colourways. So I've gone with real red and I'm just going to keep it pretty simple with adding in my colour and I'm trying to be clever where I put the colour to make, um, you know, for instance, this the intersects with this glove here. So I want to just be clever about where I put the reds so they don't kind of mess with the other image. Does that make sense? And adding in some reds here like that maybe even a little bit there you don't have to stick to the image um, to where the stripes are you can add your own extra in so now I'm just popping the little red for the holly and that's kind of why I decided to do red on this one because I knew I wanted red on the holly so I thought well I'll make definitely I'll make one of the um, scarves or one of the scarf colors red because again it limits the colors that I'm using on the card it makes it look less chaotic if you've just got a few colors on a card and less childlike I think you want it to kind of look like um, more grown up like more grown up like my English like better all right so here I've got red there and now I'll do his gloves because I want it to all kind of match. Look matchy matchy. You know, our snowmen are very colour coordinated. These dudes, they they know what it's about. So this one's glove is going behind, so I don't want to do too much of that one. And then here, this one's glove has gone behind that snowman. Just have to think about that stuff okay I think I've got all the bits right and so you could definitely do just another red um, snowman and have a third red but I thought it still was worthwhile bringing one more color and we have used a blue here so I thought well let's use kind of a, a different tone of blue this is kind of where, this is my only crazy different colour that I decided to bring in. And this is um, it's Bermuda Bay, which is one of my personal favourites. Like an aqua colour. Just to make the image pop a little bit with a different colourway. And now let's... Bring in some colour on the, on the little gloves, like so. I might even come around a little bit because that, there's a lot of white on that glove. So pop in some of that. Okay, what does that look like? Has it been hard to spot? Because I probably should have brought that in a little bit, like so. So that's kind of most of the colouring. I didn't even bother to colour the bunnies. You could definitely colour the bunnies. A um, little, little bit of colour, but I didn't. Um, what else do I have? Oh, now I did end up, I did contemplate using the Bermuda Bay for the holly, but just, you know, holly really does need to be proper green. So... I did bring in another colour and it did kind of, I didn't like having to bring in another colour, to be honest. Um, but in the end I relented and thought, well, Holly does need to be proper green. So there we go. Oops, and I did miss their hat bands. So I'll just bring that in. Like so. Again, this will not be as neat as the other one I did. There we are. All right. 
Now a little bit of, we don't want the snowmen floating and even though they are on white, it's really hard to kind of see, um, see that it is snow and that they are not just floating above the ground. You want to put kind of a little bit of a, earth them a little bit. So I'm just doing that little bit, little bit of shade underneath like so. Okay, there we are. Now, after that's kind of most of the colouring on this little card. I did want a bit of snow to be falling from the sky, so I got my white gel pen. We used to sell these in Stampin' Up, we do not sell them anymore, so you can get them from most um, news agencies, things like that, art supplies, shops. They're, they're easy enough to find. But I just wanted a little bit of snow to be falling from the sky. And if you've got a nice dark nighttime sky, you can definitely see that. The way I, I'm putting, you would think that I'm putting these snowflakes on kind of randomly. I'm not actually, I'm kind of making little triangles. So I'll show you. So here I've got two snowflakes. Let me show you. So I've got two snowflakes here and here. So I'll make a triangle up there. You can see that that's actually a triangle. So I keep making little triangles and that way I know that I'm kind of putting them evenly dispersed. It looks random, but it's actually not super random. I do then try and go back in and add some ones that are a tiny bit closer afterwards. Is this too much information? Do you just like put in your snow? <laughs> or am I the only one that, that thinks even the randomness of snow out? Oh, perhaps I'm, I'm losing the plot. But I, I then do go back in and put a few close by. Um, just to kind of make it look <laughs> random. All right, I think that's kind of a, that's like just a little bit more of an insight into my OCD issues. All right, so now we've got some snow. We've got our little dudes. It's time for the die cut, okay? So I used, now, I used our dies from the, what's it called again? Christmas. Merry Christmas Thinlet set and yesterday I cut it out and I glued it onto my card like so. Um, not impossible to do but I did think that this time I would use our double sided adhesive sheets. So let me show you. They actually come in 6 inch by 12 inch pieces. I've got um, a bunch from the old way that we used to have them, um, which they came in 12 by 12. So they don't come this big anymore, they come half the size, but it's, they look the same. So they've got like a sticker backing on them and um, you stick, you take off one layer and you stick it on the back of your cardstock, okay? So you stick it on the back of your cardstock um, and then you've kind of got a cardstock sticker, right? You're with me? So when um, you can lift off the back of the release paper, you can take the release paper off and you've turned your cardstock into a giant sticker. It's awesome. It will change the way you use your die cuts forever, okay? Because you've turned the die cuts and you don't have to glue them down anymore. You use them as a big sticker. So here's how you do that. You pop your die cut on the top, the cardstock side, not the sticker side, because otherwise your words will come out back to front. You use your big shot. If you're like me, you've named it. This is Bertha, everybody. Everybody that's watching that's new. Bertha Big Shot. I'm using the um, Precision base plate on mine. I think that's essential for when you are using your word dies because otherwise they do not cut out as well as what you want them to do. So I've got my stickery bit on the back. I've got 
this on the top. I'm rolling it through with one acrylic sheet and the precision platform underneath. So come on Bertha, do your thing. Just roll it through this way, roll it through this way. This is a Sizzix Big Shot. Bertha has been with me for about eight years now and uh, we're very close. Um, she sits on my desk over here and so here is your die cut. Here is the thing I've discovered. <laughs> Lorraine saying good morning to Bertha. Thank you. That's um, good manners, Lorraine, because we all like to say good morning to Bertha. So here's the thing I've discovered about these die cuts and getting them out. Um, it's a little fiddly. All right. I think that maybe the sticker, you putting the adhesive background on the back can be a little bit, um, adds to kind of the snugness. Um, you will need your brush to brush out this. It will take a little bit of time and I've done it once before on a, on a Facebook Live and it was long and painful. So I decided not to do it again on Facebook Live and I organised one. Here's one I prepared earlier. I even took the sticker backing off because I just do not, I cannot go through doing a Facebook Live and taking the sticker backing off of words again. I feel scarred for life. Um, the thing with these words is the great thing is, is because they're really beautiful cursive, you can, and they're kind of, um, yeah, they, they're easily manipulated. So even though it's a straight die and should be like, you could put it straight across your page like that, because they're kind of can be manipulated a little bit, moved around a little bit, you can make them curl around your image, which I just, I'm in love with that because it looks so cute, just curling around our little snowmen. So you just take the sticker off, you, lay, you won't actually stick crazy to your paper until you're ready. It will sit up there and I'm just, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I will stick it down and the way it sticks is beautiful because with glue it kind of causes a mess behind it. it doesn't cause a mess when you've got the sticker background on like so and I didn't even lose the dot look I didn't lose the dot I had it ready on my paper piercer um, for just this particular instance there we go and the dot is on now you could use some um, you could use some Wink of Stella, something like that to kind of make that, um, that Christmas stand out a little bit. But I used a little bit of our shimmer paint spray on this one. But I actually like this, the darker, um, that's real red that I've used because it matches the little snowmen perfectly. So then I thought it would kind of be nice to have a backing just to make that real red pop a little more because again we're just keeping our colours pretty simple. So I have cut a, um, a mat of real red. So that's how much glue I put on. You know I don't go crazy with glue. Um, and I've just cut it so it's like only a mil bigger than my watercolour paper all the way around because I just want to show a tiny tiny bit of red to make that red pop so once you kind of get it on in the right spot turn it back over smooch smooch like so I love this card it's really coming together beautifully um, <laughs> yeah, I know the adhesive sheets Adele they are unreal right You've got to, if you do not have the adhesive sheets, add that to your order as well because you'll need. This is um, the thick, um, the thick white cardstock because you guys know if you've watched my Facebook lives before, I'm in love with thick white cardstock. I keep stamping up in business with the amount of thick white cardstock I purchase, and I've matching that again. On the thick white. The good thing about this Merry Christmas to All stamp set is it has really a nice little um, 
one, a couple of greetings to put on the inside of your cards as well. I like that with my Christmas cards, especially because I do not like to write a lot because I've got a lot of Christmas cards. So I just want, I want a sentiment on the inside to do most of my talking. Um, and so there I've, I've really finished most of the card. The only thing that I would then go over and do is with my <clears throat> infamous fine tip glue pen. I might come back over. First of all, the good thing about this glue pen is you always squeeze it on a tissue or something. Make sure there's no bubble caught. And then I might just go over and make his little snowman noses um, a little bit glossy. And it will stand out. And then go over with the buttons as well. Just add a little bit. This will make the buttons stand up a little bit and and glow, you know, shimmer a little bit as well. Oh, and we'll just do the the holly as well. That will take a little minute to dry. Okay, so don't be popping it straight into an envelope or something uh, afterwards. Also, the thing with the adhesive um, fine tip glue is you have to make sure that the pin goes back in and I need to get new glasses because that's starting to be a struggle okay so there we go that is our cart for today a little snowman a little cute wash and our Christmas dyes which are the must-have these um, dyes are definitely a must-have dye for your collection this year if you have not made your Christmas cards yet you will want to get cracking because time is a wasting, people. It is time to make some Chrissy cards, right? And um, I think those little dudes are super cute. What do you think? Do you like the Christmas cards for today? I hope so. I hope you like um, the seasonal chums because they are one of my go-tos. Um, you need to put them into your stash. I hope you love the Merry Christmas to All stamp set as well. All right, let me send you guys over. Um, okay. <laughs> there we are. So that was it. That was um, my Christmas card for today. It went better than imagined because sometimes... Sometimes stuff happens and I think we got through that watercolouring pretty good. So I hope you have a lovely weekend um, and I will see you next Friday back <laughs> in my craft room to do some stamping and um, uh, have a fabulous weekend. Enjoy the sunshine or the winter wherever you are. And remember to leave me lots of comments. If you've got any questions, head to my blog, carolynbenny.com, to make all of your purchases. Okay, my lovelies, I will see you soon.